Andrew McGahan for Severe MMA here in SBG Charlestown standing alongside Ryan Curtis. Since we've last seen him he's been signed to fight for the Bama Lonsdale Flyweight title on the Bama, uh, what, what do we call it? The Bama Tour? The, the Bama, the Bama yeah, Tour yeah. card on the 16th Bama of uh, 16th of December. Ryan, the support you brought the last time, Saturday night, maybe people were working, maybe people that were going out. A Friday <laughs> night I think with your fans in the three arena is going to be something oh, different. It's going to be crazy because uh, now it's in work then the Monday, so everybody's going to be flat out for the whole weekend, yeah, so. Yeah, I, I, I'm going I'm to bring the nation this time. Well, like every time anyway, so. We spoke after the fight, you were happy with the performance, but what happened in the days and weeks after it? Did you start getting maybe noticed a wee bit more? Did you feel, did you get a sort of a come down the days after the fight thinking, Jesus, I can go further than I ever thought? Yeah, it's, it wasn't that, like, I was just, I was, like, I was a little bit happy with the performance, but just because I got the experience, that was the main thing, but, uh, like, I just would have liked in the finish, you know what I mean? That was, that was the big thing for me, that, uh, I would have liked in the finish, because at the end of the day, that's what I think sets me apart from the rest of them, is the finish, you know what I mean? But, I had him hurt a couple of times, and, uh, I just always remember saying to myself, like, you know what I mean, just just relax out yeah, because he's, he has a good feel for it and uh, he's been in bad positions before, like where they've had been somebody like way less experienced, he probably would have panicked a little bit and I would have got the finish, but you know what I mean, you have to be clever and just remember, like, don't burn yourself out because, like, you know what I mean, you're still to go the rest of the fight, so. I'm talking about this, a lot of the times I'm interviewing guys, it's either after a fight or getting ready for a fight. But I've never got to ask you a couple of questions, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. What was it that even got you into this gym in the first place? Well, like, everyone has a story about how they got into martial arts. I need to know Ryan Curtis's story. Um, yeah, I was, I, I, like, I was uh, training in a little, a little gym in town with uh, the other coach, I'm in Compton, and then um, that gym went a little bit pear-shaped, and then, but I'd always hear Alan's name, you know, like, it was, oh, Alan Ruddy, like, because Alan's... The big thing, like at the time, like you know what I mean, it always like it from the day the start, of the, like day one, I walked in to an MMA gym, I'd always hear Alan's name, like and even my other coach, I mean, like he always used to be talking about Alan, like you know, because he came from similar backgrounds and stuff, and he always had great respect for him and stuff. So I'd always hear of uh, Alan's name, and then uh, I was training in the in that gym with Darren McAvaney. And he said to me, listen, Alan's a good friend of mine, come on, we go up and try his gym. And then I walked in here from, like, when I was only starting off, and then just never looked back, so. Did, do you think it was something that the first day that you spent in here with him, you knew this is the place for me? Was it trial and error? Did you come in here thinking, like, ah, oh, I'm going to get the better of some of these guys, and then you got a lesson, or what was the story? Yeah, no, I just came in, and to remember, uh, we just came in, there was nothing, there was nothing here, there was like... Ian Cleary was just after me, because I was to debut or something, was Yeah, he? yeah, it was, no, it was, I think it was a bit, no, it was, it was before that, because I remember I was at that fight, but it was before that that I came in, and uh, I remember there was just about five, five little shitty mats in the middle of the floor, and... Alan was here and he had to go somewhere, he was just teaching a class real quick like and he was still, he wasn't, hadn't even got training gear on, he was just in his tracksuit and then uh, we did the class and I was just like, you know what I mean, because he was just saying to himself, geez, he's a brilliant coach, like, you know what I mean, everything he said just made sense, like, you know what I mean, even if I didn't understand that one or two things he would say in a way that I, I would fully understand, you know, so. I would pick it up. Yeah. We're looking at today a lunchtime session about 10, 12 guys all on a fight team getting ready for fights and yeah. here pushing each other harder. When you walked in here the first time, did you think, like, you know the way some people say in the back of the head they always knew that they were going to be great or I, this, this is what I was meant to do. When you walked in here, you saw the five mats, you saw a guy teaching a class in a pair of jeans. <laughs> did you envision, did you think this is the right path for me? Well, that's like from, from day one, I always just said to myself, you know what, like, you know what I mean, I, I used to play football and stuff and then, you know what I mean, I was kind of, I was like, all my family was doing the boxing thing and then I was saying this and I just said to myself, like, you know what I mean, I was always like kind of fighting ground up anyway, like, you know what I mean, just that's what happens if you live around where I live, you have a problem with somebody, right? jump out onto the road, like, you know what I mean, that's, that's just the way we do it, like, that's the way you're growing up, like, and, uh, you know, even though I was always small, I could always hang with big people, and I just, you know what I mean, I just, when, I, when I start doing this, I just felt right, but that's what I was saying, like, from, from day one, I always, like, just imagined that I would go to the top, like, because I'm not the kind of person that would do something just to do it, you know what I mean, like, I would never do something for the sake of doing it, I, I, like, I always want to be the best at yeah. What, what it, whatever it is, like you know what I mean. You could be playing table tennis, like you know what I mean. You you've had a a pretty tough twelve months yourself. 
do you think what's happened to yourself in the last 12 to 18 months has pushed you even further to know that success, that failure isn't an option in a career like this? Yeah, you know what I mean? It's you have you have setbacks. Like I have setbacks every day. Like you know what I mean? And it's, you just have to battle with them. But it's just like you know what I mean? You get you get uh, knocked down, just pick yourself back up. You know what I mean? That's the way it is. But uh, you know, yeah, everybody has setbacks in life. It's just how you deal with them and come back that that really like you know what I mean because you now people might get setbacks and they're like ah fuck this you know what I mean Stop, this, yeah. the, the, this is not for me this is stupid like, you know what I mean and don't get me wrong this, those days when I've came home and I felt like that you know what I mean this you know what I mean I don't want to do this anymore but then it's just like nah you're born to do this so you're also a barber to the stars <laughs> Dave Fogarty your cameraman he can't stop talking about you yeah. know. what's it like balancing those two careers together I know you're in work a couple of times a week yeah. in the ink factory in town and then you're down here training all the other days yeah well my cousin Tom like he he uh, gives me hours to walk around you know what I mean so I'm not in there uh, I'm mostly trained like I still get to train three times a day every day like you know what I mean well I don't train Sundays like you know what I mean so that's a day that I'm in there as well, so I mean, just have to make a little bit on the side too, but um, no, I'm still training three times a day, and then I go in there and it's like, you know what I mean, it's a bit of time off, even though you're still walking, it doesn't feel like walking there because you're not going into like a regular job, it's just like yeah, everybody, it's, you know, if I ever, <coughs> because I, it's weird, like a lot of people always say to me, this, this is a mad old place, what's it like to walk in there, and I always just, the best way to describe it is like, it's just like going off to your mate's house and having a laugh, honestly, like that's because like the, the stick is flying all day, the music is playing and you know, it's, all, it's, all just, it's just nothing but good people in there, so. That's what you want. You seem to be in a very good place here, mentally, physically and getting ready for an next fight. What's the difference? What are we going to see that's different in this fight from the one that we saw in the three arena? I'm coming, I'm coming to take his head off, you know what I mean? It's just, you know, I, I, I kind of hold my hand in there in, in that fight, like you know, I'm not going to make excuses for I hold my hand earlier, uh, early on in the fight, like, you know what I mean? And um, it's just I couldn't really let it go the way I could, uh, the way I usually can, like, you know what I mean? I hold the bat and uh, I was kind of just going through the fight with the one hand, so um, like, even when I would lock up for like, um, say if I got into a body lock position, I couldn't like fully grasp, like, you know what I mean, clasp, but like, so um, yeah, I'm going to be trying hard and I'm coming, I'm coming to take him out, like, you know what I mean? Excellent. So, thank you very much. Appreciate it, Andrew. Thanks a lot.